Welcome back. Our next guest is James Taranto. He is a columnist of the Wall Street Journal. He also serves on the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal. Mr. Taranto, thank you for joining us today. Thanks. Good to be here. Uh, I read a couple of your columns and a couple of things I'd like to center on by the time we have here today. First, let's start with the Friends of Aid, uh, the Hollywood conservatives that are being tormented by the IRS. Uh, you pointed out quite rightly that the New York Times may have had a pang of conscience here by bringing the story to the forefront. Well, it was interesting. Uh, the Times published last week on the front page uh, a story about uh, Friends of Abe apparently being targeted by the uh, IRS. They've applied for a 501c3 nonprofit status, and uh, the IRS made uh, a bunch of demands of them, uh, as they've, uh, we've heard they've made of other uh, conservative groups, uh, including uh, they wanted uh, access to a private part of their website that included membership uh, lists. And the reason this is such a problem is uh, that uh, Friends of Abe is a secretive organization. The political environment in Hollywood is, from what I've heard uh, described, it's pretty much totalitarian. People who don't share the pre prevailing left-wing views are worried about their livelihoods. They're worried so, about getting blacklisted, in other words. Yes, exactly. So people want to keep their, uh, you know, pe people who aren't, there are a few high-profile people who are known to be associated with Friends of Abe, Gary Sinise, John Voight, Lionel Chetwin, and so forth. But, you know, most people who are less well-known or who work in, uh, uh, who work behind the camera uh, would rather uh, keep it to themselves. And uh, the IRS apparently has dropped this demand and uh, is no longer demanding this from Friends of Abe. Did it, did it drop the demand because the New York Times put the focus on it? or that time before Well, no, it had, it had dropped the demand according to the Times piece uh, already. Uh, but just, I mean, the, the, what's interesting about this is uh, it's... You know, it shows how the IRS can chill freedom of association and not just freedom of speech. Because if people have to worry that their names are going to be turned over to the IRS, you remember what happened with the National Organization for Marriage, a group that opposes same-sex mm -hmm. marriage. Somebody in the, in the IRS uh, leaked their membership data to uh, the Human Rights Campaign, a gay rights group, which then posted the, the uh, or it was a donor list rather, posted this information on, which the IRS is supposed to keep confidential, on their website. Uh, and uh, I, I, I don't know if that led to harassment of the donors. But I, it, I could bet dollars could. to donuts it led to harassment. Yeah. Because okay, I've been on the receiving end of that over the years when I've testified against gay rights bills and other things in the city of New York back in the 70s and 80s. You use the term secretive. But isn't it true that uh, under federal law, these names are protected? In other words, you don't have to release them? So well, apparently it's not something that uh, the IRS is, uh, is entitled to under the law. I, the, the Times quoted experts as saying uh, that they shouldn't have... That, the IRS shouldn't have made this demand. It's a little bit unclear exactly what the IRS was asking for because it said they wanted access to a portion of the site that included membership lists. Anyway, Friends of Abe says that the, uh, that the, uh, the IRS is not demanding this, and if they do demand it again, if that becomes a precondition for 501c3 status, they're going to withdraw their application. But the news I broke in my column was that uh, I obtained a letter that went out to FOA members from the executive director uh, reassuring the members that uh, you know your your information is safe with us. And what was interesting about the letter was just the tone captured uh, the, uh, the, 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 the sense of uh, pervasive fear that conservatives in Hollywood feel. I should mention, by the way, the letter itself contained no uh, information about the members. Well, do we know of any instances where left-wing organizations uh, 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 Applying for a C3, have been the feds have demanded to see their lists of membership. Do we know of any cases? I, I'm I'm not sure about that, but uh, there was a uh, memo that uh, Daryl Issa, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, put out uh, last fall, in which he uh, addressed this uh, claim that uh, there have been liberal groups as well as conservative groups targeted, and it compared. Uh, the uh, conservative targeting with this one liberal group that was targeted. It turns out the difference was that the professional staff at, at the IRS had said these conservative groups seem to be in order, there's no need to do this, and it was pushed by the political staff. The liberal group was a group uh, whose activities were actually much more questionable under the law, and the professional staff had flagged it and uh, recommended further investigation. So, uh, so some of the claims we've heard that there's nothing to this are uh, t turn out to be misleading. Ah. 
Now, what, were you, what was your reaction to Chuck Schumer's comments last week that, uh, you know, many of these Tea Party type groups, the right wing groups, should be scrutinized by the IRS? Well, you know, that's, uh, that, that, he's being honest. That's the way these people feel. They, uh, they uh, are interested in using the government uh, to suppress dissent. And, uh, you know, when Obama came out uh, a few months ago and said, uh, this is a phony scandal, after expressing his outrage uh, uh, at first. Uh, so, you know, this is a serious problem. And what's even worse is we have uh, uh, the press joining in. I mean, the New York Times, uh, the news side did a job on this story. But their editorial page has been terrible on this, has been uh, egging on the IRS in, uh, in uh, I, I going after conservative groups. And they've turned out to be one of the biggest opponents of free speech, which, of course, what they really want is a monopoly on speech, uh, because they don't want the strictures to apply to media corporations like the New York Times Company. Of course. The, it's called illiberal liberals, I suppose. And, you know, I live in New York City, so I've learned to appreciate the fact that if you dare, they are very tolerant until you dare to disagree with them. Well, it's a combination of that illiberalism and just rent-seeking behavior on the part of a corporation, right? The Times wants regulations that will benefit it. Ah. Uh, they, you know, so they don't, they don't want companies to be able to uh, I, I comment on political campaigns, but they use their corporate uh, resources to endorse candidates in, uh, in elections. Ah, they do indeed. That's I can assure you. Let me ask you to turn the subject for a moment. Uh, you've written about uh, pre-K, particularly with the president announcing pre-K the other day. I live in the city of New York. Mayor de Blasio, as you know, is demanding as a right uh, pre-K and wants to raise taxes, but wants to raise taxes regardless of whether or not he gets all the money from Albany. Uh, you may have noticed that originally Governor Cuomo said that the first year he wants to do it statewide. It'll cost $100 million. It'll go up to $500 million in five years, I think. But now new numbers came out from the head of the Board of Regents in New York State saying, oh, it's going to cost about a billion and a half. Uh, do you think there is, you know, many things I've read, the results of pre-K are dubious. I'm of the opinion that one, the left love to get the control of kids a year earlier at four years old. Also, I think this could be a great boondoggle for the teachers unions that could get, you know, in New York City alone, there will probably be 2,000 more teachers hired. What is your perspective on this whole pre-K thing? Do you think this is the latest liberal thing to get the base cooking, or do you think this really has teeth? Well, it's not something I've looked into a lot, but uh, I tend to be skeptical of any proposal for a new government program. Uh, I, you know, my understanding is that, uh, that the studies that suggest that it uh, has great educational results uh, have been overhyped. Uh, and uh, so I, I would be, you know, I'd be inclined to be against it. I think that uh, de Blasio, I mean, what's interesting about de Blasio on this thing is, as you said, uh, he says he wants higher taxes for it. And he doesn't want to do it without higher taxes. He's, so he, wants, he just wants to raise taxes yeah. for the sake of raising taxes. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's really punitive. It's, it's even almost too much for Andrew Cuomo, who, as you know, has moved very far to the left in the last year or so. Yeah. So uh, he sort of doesn't want them to get around him. But he's, he seems to be very nervous at the moment, although he tells conservatives like myself, who are pro-life, that we're not welcome in the state of New York anymore. But yeah, well, talk about your uh, illiberal liberals. And then Cuomo kind of tried to back away from that comment, saying that it was taken out of context, which, I mean, he said other things that were not as bad, but he still said that. So Absolutely. It, the context doesn't really, uh, doesn't really uh, uh, mitigate it. But uh, de Blasio then came out after the controversy and said, I stand behind what uh, the governor said 100 percent. That's right. You're absolutely right. Uh, the State of the Union address the other day, uh, is there anything in there that you think has teeth for the president to turn the tide in his public opinion polls, which have dropped considerably? It's like 40 percent approval. Teeth to turn the tide, that's, uh, that's quite a metaphor. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, well, I didn't watch the speech, I will tell you. I was out at an uh, 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 event where... Well, I, I was uh, actually folding my handkerchiefs that evening, so yeah. go ahead. Uh, you know, it seems to me that Obama is uh, in political trouble, which is not uncommon for a president in his second term. But with Obamacare kicking in, uh, people having all these problems with it, with the economy not, uh, not uh, you know, doing a little bit better, but still not very well. Uh, and uh, the, uh, in terms of the midterm election, this is a very favorable uh, lineup for the Republicans in the Senate because it's the most Republican uh, 
set of uh, it's most Republican Senate class in terms of which sen seats are up, but it's one where the Democrats actually have more seats up because they did so well in 2008. Right. So I. Uh, you know, I think that uh, all indications are grim for the Democrats, and uh, I, I, I don't see what Obama can do to uh, to uh, improve that. I, do you, do know, you think? Do you think the American people? It dropped down to 33 million people watched the speech the other night. That's the lowest I think since George W. H. W. Bush in 1992. Do you think the American people are just getting bored and tired of hearing Obama constantly on the road campaigning? I have to think so. I mean, I've been bored with him since I, I oh, I don't know, 2009. <laughs> I, so, you know, I, I, I can't imagine that, uh, that people are, I mean, look what, look what happened in 2009, 2010, when he made this effort to sell Obamacare, right? He gave speech after speech about it. He gave a speech to a joint session of Congress. He gave the speech to the State of the Union. And it, you know, it never caught on. It, he never won any kind of public support for it. They got the law passed because they rammed it through Congress. Uh, so I, I don't know. I kind of suspect that people tuned out a long time ago. Well, in terms of the midterm elections, I think it's pretty... Uh, the, they should keep the House, the Senate. You know, the odds are they can take the Senate. What do you think for them to blow this election they would have to do in the coming months to shoot themselves in the head once again? What's the worst things they could do in the Congress? Republicans? The Republicans, yeah. Well, uh, the worst thing Republicans can do is uh, nominate idiots for uh, competitive seats. Good point. Uh, you know, you don't want to end up with another Todd Akin. Of course, the interesting thing about Akin is that I... Uh, uh, as I understood it, a pro Claire McCaskill pack actually ran ads, I uh, argue, uh, in the Republican primary saying Aiken is the most conservative candidate. So sh he was her choice of candidates. Well, the same thing Harry Reid did in, in Nevada a couple of years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so that's not unusual. They want the worst candidate or the weakest candidate to run against them. So that, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, Governor Christie, do you think he's cooked at this stage of the game? I mean, every day is just coming out of the woodwork. I'm not saying he's guilty of anything. I'm of the opinion he probably had no idea of the shenanigans that were going on the GW Bridge. And I used to be the executive director of the Port Authority in New York and New Jersey. And there's a lot of cones that are on that bridge from time to time. But uh, do you think that they have just bombarded him where he's almost cooked? We've got about 45 seconds left. I think that uh, this has done significant damage to him, uh, even if it turns out he's telling the truth and he wasn't involved in it. Uh, partly because there are a lot of conservative Republicans who are suspicious of Christie to begin with. And uh, I think that uh, this will, this gives them an argument to say, well, wait a minute, you know, what makes you think this guy is, is the guy who can win, who's electable, which is always the argument for less uh, conservative uh, Republicans. Well, it's so I think he's, I think he's uh, certainly no longer the front runner. Uh, I would tend to agree with that. I mean, the pounding he is getting, and it's amazing. The two sets of rules. Uh, Governor Cuomo is ignored when he makes his obnoxious statements, but this guy's going to hammer it for anything by, like, you know, pressing for economic development in New Jersey, as the Times had it today. Mr. Yeah. Taranto, I, we're running out of time. I want to thank you so much. Hope you can come back again. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Coming up next segment, I'm going to be talking to Group Director for the American Petroleum Institute, Bob Greco. I am George Mullen, filling in for Steve, Steve Malsberg on Newsmax TV. See you in a minute.